W-N-S-T, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. Take a little break from the Maryland Crab Cake Tour this week for Thanksgiving. We'll be back after. We'll be at Fadley's on the 9th, getting ready for the holidays and crab cakes and shipping. And I love talking about this stuff, and we'll be doing that with the Maryland Lottery and our friends at Goodwill and the Window Nation. But I especially love rubbing it in with guys who think like crawfish are better than Maryland crabs and can ship both out to their humble abode in Peytonville out there in uh, Denver. We're playing the Broncos this week, and I don't think of this guy as a Bronco, even though he assured me that he was in the other side of that freezing night out there now going on 10 years ago. He does sports radio out there because I taught him really well back here in Baltimore when he was a draft pick, and uh, I have incredible admiration for all these guys of my era 25 years later doing what I do. The great Brandon Stokely, Super Bowl 35 champion. We don't talk about his other Super Bowl here. uh, Joins us now from Denver for all things Broncos and Ravens. You know, the sky's falling here, right? We lost by a point and Trevor Lawrence came back. But the Denver thing, like, I can't wait to hear what you might have to say about what's going on out there, huh? Yeah. um, You know, you look at your situation and, yeah, it's frustrating to lose to Jacksonville. Maybe you're not playing quite as well. Had a tough game against Carolina. Um, but you look at the situation over here and the expectations for uh, Broncos country here were sky high after the Russell Wilson trade. And all of a sudden, it's been as bad as it's been since the Super Bowl, since Super Bowl 50, uh, the Broncos won against the Panthers. And it's just been awful. Uh, it just The offense can't score points. The defense has been playing good. Um, you know, there's only so much they can do when your offense isn't scoring points. And so it's been a complete disaster. First year with Nathaniel Hackett as the coach, you know, he won't be here for year two. There's no chance of that uh, happening. So they'll be looking for a new coach. You got new owners, a lot of change. And there was so much optimism and positivity uh, about this year. And it's been as bad as it's been here since uh, that Super Bowl 50. Brandon, you, you caught passes from, uh, you know, dozens, if not, you know, getting up on 100 uh, different people in your career, moving around, different quarterbacks, backup quarterbacks, guys we heard of, guys we haven't heard of. What was sold to Broncos country in regard to Russell Wilson? Because I'm sure you went on the radio, as you do in, in Denver five days a week, and you're trying to dissect this and saying, what are we getting? What was the promise of all of it, and tell me how things went so wrong. Well, I think when you hear Russell Wilson, you hear, man, this guy's, I mean, over 10 years, I think he won more games than any other quarterback. I mean, he had, he was unbelievable uh, through 10 years with Seattle. All he did was win football games. We saw him win a Super Bowl. Um, we saw him lose a Super Bowl. But, I mean, he was always playing at a high level. His teams were always in the playoffs. You were going to get a really, really good quarterback that was going to elevate everyone around him. And finally, the offense, the Broncos offense that we hadn't seen um, since Peyton Manning left um, was actually going to be able to score points again. It was going to be fun watching football. That's what we thought. And it's been the complete opposite uh, for whatever reason. Not sure. It's hard to pinpoint one thing. Russ, obviously, he has he hasn't been good. He hasn't been making plays as he slowed down a little bit. You know, his mobility and quite the same. Um, but the offense is terrible. Um, and then you, so you take a step back. Is it the coaching? Is it the offense? Does he not have enough players around him? That's kind of what you're hoping for because you're stuck with him. You gave him, you know, 200 and something million dollars, you know, $144 million guaranteed. So you're stuck with him for the next few years. He's not going anywhere. So you got to figure out what to do to try to get the best out of him. Well, Brandon Stokely's been watching things out there, and yeah, I love having you on and talking about the old days, and we'll do all that, and the movie that's coming out, we're excited about that, and how we're losing folks like Goose, and uh, and I know we got together and we talked about that uh, earlier in the summer, and certainly from a football perspective here, where the Ravens find themselves as a franchise, and where the Broncos, and you're in the middle of it, and you know Peyton's legacy, and you tied to him, and Elway being around in the old days... New ownership there. You're talking about like a complete cleansing, right, of of all of that and this new thing that's happening. Meanwhile, here, you know, you played for John Harbaugh here, right? You worked for Steve Bashotti twice, right? So, and and Ozzy and Eric DaCosta was the guy involved in drafting you, uh, you know, all these years later. So, nothing changes here. And yet, the expectation and what it is and how this team. They've had double-digit leads in the second half of every game 
11 weeks, really hard to do, even for the teams that go 11 and 0 and those teams where the Dolphins break their champagne and do all that. And they've lost four of the games. Like it's, it's uncanny. And I mean, it starts to, I think, get in your brain a little bit when this is going on, especially when for this team as assemble, what you're going to see this week, the defense is a lot better than the offense by far. You're not expecting this to happen to the defense here. Right. And, you know, when you look at the consistency there um, and it's great, it's great for a guy like me looking at the Ravens and saying, Hey, I still know that guy. Yeah. That guy was there when I was there. Um, and so it, it helps, it helps have that. Uh, you feel like you still have that connection to that football team. And it's that, that's how you build a winner. You know, when you have a consistency, you have a game plan throughout that organization, Ozzy leaves, Eric comes in, um, Harbaugh has been there forever. Uh, so Look, it's um, it doesn't happen by coincidence. It, it starts from the top with Steve Bashadi and it works its way down. You got a great plan there. Uh, but, the, you know, just blowing some of these leads, it's a head scratcher because they are a really good football team. And when you're a really good football team, you know, you got to pounce on Carolina. You got to put that thing away um, earlier than what they did. Uh, you, you look at Jacksonville, you got them on the ropes. You got to be able to finish that game off um, offensively. You know, you're kicking field goals defensively there at the end, fumble balls on the ground. You just can't quite get it. Jacksonville makes a couple plays. Next thing you know, you're, you're, you're losing a game that you never should lose. And you're asking yourself why, how, all of those things. And, you know, when you look at their offense, for me, when I watch their offense and, and they're explosive, they do a lot of great things, but there's too much gray area. You know, there's not, they, this, there's not this is what we're going to do. This is where you're going to be. I know where you're going to be. You know, I come from the Peyton Manning school of offense, and there was no gray area out there. It's like, hey, you're running 12 yards. You're breaking out here. This is where I expect you to be. This is where you need to be. Um, and when I watch the Ravens, and I don't watch them game in and game out, um, but there's too much gray area with their offense. And that, you know, that shows up late in football games. That shows up in crunch time. You know, you have to be on the same page with your quarterback. There is no, like, uh, I thought you were going to be here. No, I was going to – no. We know where, where you're supposed to be. This is where you're supposed to be. This is what's going to happen. And I've seen too much of that with the Ravens over the last couple of years. Well, we've seen a whole lot of the play coming in with, you know, 15, 12 seconds, getting to the line. Lamar rushed. I You know, we don't see this – Lamar, what you talk about with Peyton, I mean, you're talking about the greatest of all time. By the way, I saw Trevor Lawrence. He he has some Peyton Manning elements about him and certainly his accuracy. You find out why he's a 1-1, that he's capable of cutting your head off, right? Like at the end of the game, it was it was uncanny how accurate he was and how orchestrated it was and how the receivers knew where to be. I mean, the, the that, that was – I tip my cap to that. But what we're seeing with this offense now is Greg Roman, Lamar Jackson, four or five years into this, A, their best play is still Lamar running the football. And without Ronnie Stanley, not not so good. Without Hollywood Brown and no Rashad Bateman, they don't have a guy. I'm not convinced Mark Andrews is 100% with the shoulder thing, but back at least. And the running game – Every week they've had a different running back, you know, for 10 weeks. And Lamar's still their best running back and not nearly as effective without Ronnie Stanley. So we see all of these things sort of pile up. And that's that's trouble enough, right? They're trying to work in Likely and Oliver and they have these other – Demarcus Williams. They go down the field to Deshaun Jackson who look like uh, – he's your age, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he's and, not that old. Well, I mean, that and, and that worked, right? So you, you, make, you make a play. That's why he's there to make one kind of play and that way to win a ball game. But they're not getting plays in. And this is fundamentally year after year, but certainly week after week and lately – Lamar feels really rushed at the line of scrimmage, and that's no way to be looking up, reading, seeing things pre-snap that Peyton used to his advantage, that great quarterbacks used to their – all great quarterbacks use that. The order of operations, you know, it's got to be clean. It's got to be – you got to, you know, get the play in. You got to – all those things matter. And, um, you know, especially when you start playing good football teams, when you get in the playoffs, I mean, those things lose you football games. This is the NFL, man. It's not high school. And we dealt with it here, you know, in Denver early in Nathaniel Hackett's tenure. I think it was a uh, second or third game, second game maybe, third game. Uh, the, the 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 crowd was counting down the play clock because they had too many delay game penalties in, in one and a half games. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Uh, so it's the NFL. 
you, you got to have a clean order of operations because it's hard enough to go out there and play competent and good offensive football. And then when you're always up against the clock, when the play's coming in late, um, all of those things, uh, look, it does, it certainly doesn't help. Um, but, you know, you, you go back to certain things and, and why things are happening, why things are going certain ways. And when your quarterback's not there for the majority of the offseason, that doesn't help you in the season. Um, you know, being on the same page. I know Lamar wasn't there, right, for a lot of the offseason. You look at a guy like Aaron Rodgers wasn't there. A lot of young ones. Well, and now he's, he's been injured and hasn't been practicing as well. So, right. you know, he had the hip injury, missed the practice last Friday, missed the practice. Uh, you know, so now, I mean, these guys are – Demarcus Williams a new wide receiver to this team. I mean, Deshaun Jackson's been on the team three weeks. You know what it's like walking in week eight and right. having to try to figure this out as a veteran who might not have been as fast or whatever, but – it's like the, it's like that old country song, as good as I once was, once, right? And yeah. Deshaun Something Jackson like certainly that. can be that, right? But they they have to be in the building together, right? I, at this time of the year, weather elements are going to start to come into play. I, I I'm worried, you know, like you're you, woe is the Broncos, Brandon Stokely, right? But we, but we're thinking, oh, we're going to win this week. Well, we thought that last week here. I don't know what how bad things are in Denver, and that's for you to tell me, but you're not finding the best version of the Ravens, and this needs to be a week where they start to feel good about themselves. Well, the Broncos are the get-right game for everyone this year. Um, so Baltimore, just you know, take a deep breath this week. It's, it's a get-right game for you. Defensively, Broncos are solid now. They, they are a solid group, but, but Carolina ran the football all over them um, uh, last week. So – uh, you know, their defense is OK. They can play well in certain spurts, um, obviously, but their offense is as bad of an offense as you can see. Uh, they can't even sniff 20 points. Um, they are the worst scoring offense in the NFL with Russell Wilson as their quarterback. So uh, they're an absolute train wreck right now. Uh, but you make some good points. I mean, look, when you have a lot of newness around you, the only way to get better and to be ready to go and play at a high level on Sundays is guess what is to go out there and do it during the week, do it during the off season. Um, you know, like I said, that's the school of football. I came from the Peyton Manning school, man. It's about getting out there grinding and working uh, during the off season, during training camp, during the week of practices. And I understand it's a football is a lot different game than what it was 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, but if you want to be great and if you want to go out there and execute at high level offensively, you got to do it, you know, day in and day out. And if you're not able to do it, it's going to you're going to see holes throughout the course of the season. You're going to see games that have you scratching your head. And uh, right now, I think that's what we're seeing uh, with the Ravens. But, you know, hey, Baltimore, don't worry. You got the Broncos this week. So, so hold on, when the, when the Ravens make a good play and you're watching in your den there in the that Stokely Manor, uh, you know, out there in the suburban uh, Denver, Colorado, um, do, you, do you use we or are you rooting for the right? Like, because you wore different jerseys, but I know you swear to me that we were the most special one because we were the first one. But I, I don't, I, look, you, at this. I, look, look at I know. This. Go ahead, hold it up. That's 35, Super Bowl 35, right? Baltimore drafted me. In the fourth round, they took a chance on me. Uh, Terry McDonough, Isaac Newsome, uh, Brian Billick. Uh, so I got to spend four great years there. Won a Super Bowl. Um, I got to finish my career there in 2013. Wasn't quite as good as I once was, right? Little Toby Keith, but I was as good as I once was. Uh, something like that. Uh, and I just, you know, it wasn't the year that I wanted in 2013. Just couldn't stay healthy. Uh, but, man, love that organization. I always pull for for the Baltimore Ravens it's always we with the Ravens they they treat you like family um you know and it just a a first class organization so for me um I always think it's Baltimore as as we always and it's great like we talked about earlier it's great because a lot of those faces are still there that were there back in 1999 I mean it's crazy including me <laughs> I know um tell everybody what you do because you're you do sort of what I do I mean you you, you you love sports. I mean, you used to come out to my studio when you were young and I was young. And um, and you, you've you've always liked talking about games and the games. I mean, you, you were an athlete. You were a jock. You were a kid that loved sports. Yeah. yeah um, you know, I'm not very smart at anything else. I feel like the only thing that I'm really good at was playing football, playing sports. Um, and so I got the opportunity to do sports radio. I absolutely love it. 
we talk 99% Denver Broncos. Um, and I, you I didn't just get into it. the avalanche. Huh? You, you, you oh, yeah, I got it? into them. Yeah, no, I love the avalanche. I mean, it's nothing like watching a hockey game, especially playoff hockey live. It's unbelievable. Louisiana um, boy so. out on the ice, huh? It's it's great. I mean, look, I love it. We we talk Nuggets. We talk a little Rockies. You got you got to be winning for us to talk about you if you're not the Denver Broncos. Um, but so we hit a little bit of everything. But we're 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 mainly Denver Broncos, which I love right up my alley. I love the NFL. I love football. Um, and so you know that I just I don't know what else I would have done. I'm not good at anything else. Uh, so but it just kind of happened. And so I got a radio show here that I do three hours a day, and it's it's been a lot of fun. Had great mentors along the way, Nestor, you know, like you, and um, had had some great times uh, in, in Baltimore. And But this is just what I, I love to do. It's, it's a lot of fun, and um, I love football. Well, it's a lot more fun when your team's doing well, and yeah. you and I have been at that uh, in different ways. I mean, going back to when Peyton's winning championships there, and we're visiting out there, and so, so – Run me through what's going to happen in Denver as you see it, right? I mean, I don't even, maybe Peyton would be able, I don't know, but like what, that's a complete overhaul, new owners, new concepts, same fans, same stadium, same city, same laundry, but things that have changed and they're about to change in a big way. In the same way, if if somebody buys the Orioles eventually, God willing, uh, and whenever Bashadi's done here, there will be someone else. When these new people come in, and it's certainly in the new era, you got to hope that they're something better than what Jimmy Haslam has been or what certainly Daniel Snyder has been down the road here. But the jury's out, and they're going to do things their way, and – that this this franchise, what you're about to talk about 99% of the time, as you said, is a losing franchise now trying to win and do it with a whole new cast of probably everything and probably not named Manning or Elway or maybe not at least, but certainly whatever the way, not the Bolin way. That's that way's over with. Yeah, well, you know, you, you've got a new ownership group uh, this offseason, um, richest owners in the NFL, not even close. Um, so you got money. Uh, to spend, um, which which is a good thing. So that's not uh, a, a really a, an obstacle along the way when you, when it comes to doing certain things. Uh, which which like I said is is a really good thing. We just don't know how they're going to operate. Are they a patient group? Um, are they are they you know are they are they quick finger triggered uh, group? You know where hey you, you you're gone here. Um, but we're, we're we're finding out here really quickly with Nathaniel Hackett. And they've been patient with them so far. I mean. This thing has been a mess here. Uh, they didn't hire him. Uh, it, he was hired by the previous uh, group. So well, that's uh, we'll always see. messy, right? Right. Yeah. So, but this group manager, is the one that gave that gave Russell Wilson the money. Yes. Right. Yes. This new group, the new group, did um, George Payton, the general manager, who they didn't hire. He's in his second year. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, like we don't know their temperament. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see here this offseason. I just can't see Nathaniel Hackett um, coming back uh, next year. It's just been an absolute disaster. It's been, you know, and he might not make it through the rest of, uh, of this year. Uh, the other question is George Payton, the general manager. He's in his second year. He's done some nice things. But when you – if you're the new ownership group, you look at him and say, well, you're the one that hired Nathaniel Hackett, who he had to fire after one year. You're the one that traded for Russell Wilson and gave up all that draft capital plus some players. And then on top of that, you gave him this huge contract um, when you didn't have to. He still had two years left on his contract. So it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be um, an interesting offseason here uh, because I'm sure they'll be in Denver. They'll be looking for a new coach. And, um, you know, just it's been a bad, bad year here. So, you know, I, I know. In Baltimore, y'all looking at it like, man, that was a tough loss to Jacksonville last week. We've lost some 17-point lead, double-digit leads. Hey, take a deep breath. It's 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 a lot worse over here in Denver. Well, the air's always thinner in Denver. Every time I'm there, I'm huffing and puffing. Uh, Brandon Stokely is here. He of the infamous Super Bowl 35 catch, which I predicted during Radio Row Week that <laughs> week, uh, all these years later, and we got the TV show coming out. Uh, yeah. I could poke fun at your Colts thing. And I like Jim Ursay and Pete Ward. I was up in New York. Jim put together his incredible Hall of Fame thing, doing it for mental health awareness. I mean, the band. Dude, if you get a chance to go see that, I'll meet you anywhere you want to go. You and me at Jim Ursay Collection event where he puts Mike Mills up on stage with John Mellencamp's band and Kenny Aronoff. On his, I mean, it's it was 
the concert of the year. Oh. So I'm not anti Jim and I'm not even poking at Jim as the Baltimore guy. I've made peace with all that. I, I, I like Jim, but this would be like the Denver Broncos saying, we like that Brandon Stokely on the radio. Let's make him the head coach. You would take the call and dude, I would sell your ass. I'd say, my God, he, <laughs> his dad was a coach. Of course he should be the coach. And you would say to that, what if the, if the Broncos called you or if God's honest, if you and Ursay were that close, you're probably as qualified to coach the Colts as Jeff is. And I, and I don't mean that in any way, but I, I respect you. I respect him. I also sure. respect coaches. And, yeah. and, and I saw Cower go nuts about it. I don't know what the industry thinks, but it literally could have been you, Brandon. It might be you. Yeah, I, w- I would have taken it. I mean, look, what well, I, I would never forget that opportunity. I'm not going to go into the coaching ranks and try to grind my way up. Uh, but if someone wants to offer you the head coaching job, I, what, like you're not going to take it? That would just you would have taken it. Oh, huh? I love this. I'm glad I asked this question. Of course, I would take it. Who wouldn't take it? I mean, it's would like would you be uh, any good I, at it? Do you do you think in your heart of hearts you could walk in there and be a head coach? I mean, I think maybe you could look, because of your dad and like I that, but that's just me being in. And yeah. I'm not an idiot, even though they've thrown me out. I've spent a lot of time in coaches' offices. I I just really think that's it. That's not a job that that even you might be qualified in the real no, way not qualified you know you think bill cower was qualified for his tv gig that he took that they just handed to him huh ah. huh, bill? huh bill i mean they just handed <laughs> he, he bypassed a lot of people uh let's not acting let's not act like coaches or like rocket scientists like we're building nuclear uh, weapons or something like a, you know come on give me a break bill cower standing on his high horse over there acting like you know uh, the coaching profession is some like um uh, write a passage where if you don't grind your way up through there, then you shouldn't get that opportunity. Jeff Saturday played a long time in the NFL. And if the owner wants to give him an opportunity, then, uh, Hey, then, then like, it's not his fault for taking it. it the, the Jim Mercy is doing something different. Oh, wow. It, it might actually work out. They're not a, they're an average football team. Um, and you know, everybody wants them to just do the norm here and just, Oh, well, we got to hire this guy. We got to hire this guy. Hey, why not do something? Think outside the box. You see it happen all the time in basketball, um, and baseball. Uh, why not in football? Uh, just because you didn't, you know, grind 15 years and be a coordinator. Look, being a head coach, you're not calling. If you don't call plays, what do you do? Right. You, you, you're an organizer. You're a motivator. Right. And you got a lot of things uh, outside of that. But you're not getting down there teaching the X's and O's and all of those things. So um, I think some of those people that were being very critical of it, um, especially from the football community, Joe Thomas. Right. He was given a job after he played. Did he earn it? Did he grind his way up through there to get that TV job? Bill Cowher? No, they didn't. So um, I would say chill out on that. And you know, he won a big game his first game. They lost a close one against the Eagles that, that next week. But certainly they've been playing better than what they were um, uh, before. But, hey, let's give this thing a chance and see what it looks like. Are you territorial about Jeff a little bit? No, I like Jeff a lot. Obviously, we were teammates. Um, and he's a great guy. Um, and so it's like it's, it's nothing. If you were the 35-year-old wide receiver there, you could buy into him being the head coach in the way that you buy into Mike Rabel being a head coach or – yeah, you know, I mean, John Harbaugh and Tomlin, they played the game, not at that level. But but I, I, I think the level of respect comes from getting being the first guy in the building, the last guy there and making sense in the meetings, you know, uh, knowing yeah. what's Look, going hey, on. Hey, lead me, lead me. Give me a plan and show me how we're going to try to win this week. And let me believe it and uh, be a leader up there. And so, look, I, I was I, I played for uh, Josh McDaniels here for a couple of years. I think we were the same age, you know, 34, 35 years old, 33, something like that years old. Uh, but if you can get up there and command a room and, and give me a plan, and uh, I don't care if you played football, you didn't play football, you were a coach last year, you weren't a coach last year. Man, it, that, that to me didn't matter. And I played 15 years and I had it all. I had old coaches, I had young coaches. Um, just come in there, organize. Give me something that I can believe that's gonna that that I'm gonna be successful out there doing. And if you do that, I can buy in. Uh, what you did and how you got there to me um, doesn't really matter. Never mattered. Um, and so it's all about uh, being believable and being a um, you know being a good communicator and having a great plan. And so if you do that for me as a player, I could buy into it. It didn't matter, like I said, um, how you got the job.
I've always loved Brandon Stokely, even though your buddy Peyton never put you on the TV show. And by the way, I, I wanted to tweet this out a week or two ago. All these new quarterback commercials and stuff, we miss Peyton. I mean, I, I'm not in Peyton overload. I know maybe in Denver, you may, you might personally have Peyton overload in your own life. But, like, I, I feel like I need him in some more commercials coming back and doing and being funny. And, and not the gambling commercials. Like, not even the whole family. But, like, just hitting kids in the head with football, Saturday Night Live stuff, the bread stuff with Eli. I, I, I need better commercials. They haven't been the same since Peyton's not around. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, and there's always like an old former teammate that would love to, you know, join in one or two of them also. So that wouldn't be a bad he idea. He already built your one house, dude. He's trying to help his brother now. You know what I mean? I, so. I know. I know. It's like, I mean, brother did okay for himself over there in New York. He doesn't need that much help, you know? Come on. Oh, man, to, to be a fly on the wall with you guys uh, all breaking chops out there in Denver. Last thing for you, uh, and no serious business, I mean, your catch, your connection, your ring, your affinity for the Ravens, my our, our relationship over all these years, uh, you know, 22 years later now uh, going on, and uh, me finding the old book in the back. Losing Goose, the movie's coming out. Everybody's wondering what the producers from up in uh, NFL films. I've talked to them because I wrote a book about you guys. And I guess the legend of what the defense is going to be that you can't play the game the same way anymore, the way it was played then and what that team will be. Um, th there's a new rocket ride for them. I think when the movie comes out for the defense and for the team itself, as for what you guys accomplish. And I, I, I can't wait. Like I'm get, getting the popcorn ready. You know, I'm I, for whenever the debut of this thing happens, if I get some media eye on it ahead of time or whatever, but I, I can imagine you're looking forward to it too. Right. I mean, this is what you got left once it's all over with other than the reunions is, Hey man, our place in history. And you were a part of it. That's it. And it brings back those memories. You know, I mean, shoot, I was, I don't know what, 24 years old. Um, and now I'm, you know, 46. I got a kid off in college. I got a sophomore in high school. Uh, back then, I wasn't married, um, you know, and you, you look back at that and like, wow, what a special team, what a special moment. Never would imagine that I would have been playing in the Super Bowl, let alone winning the Super Bowl and being able to catch a touchdown. Um, it's just something that, uh, you know, one of the highlights of my life, obviously. And so uh, to be able to relive those moments is certainly in a um, – uh, situation like this is going to be is going to be awesome and you know like you said you, you you know we're all getting older and life is moving on and uh, so it's always great to reflect and you know we've lost a few guys along the way and um, football was different back then than, than what it is now and so um, it was a, it was a fun group I really didn't know what I was getting into at that time you know second year in the NFL and just trying to survive and next thing you know you look up and the confetti's pouring down at the Super Bowl and you know, I got to spend that time with my grandfather who's passed away, my dad who has passed away. You know, that to me at that after party, you're just sitting there and I got my sisters and uh, I'll pull a picture up of me and you and your dad and your grandfather right now because those pictures exist. Yes. Yes. And just, you know, that's what it's all about. Those people that helped you get there. And then you're sitting there at that table uh, and the after party and just looking around and it's like, oh, my gosh, I just won the stinking Super Bowl. Like, how is that even possible? Never in my mind could I have dreamt that that would have happened. And and then you get to spend it with your family. And and so those are the moments that, um, you know, just um, that's what you live for. And that's what you, you know, you always remember. And so certainly this. This documentary uh, that will be coming out um, is going to be awesome. Going to be awesome to you know relive those moments. Oh, hold on here. This is the picture. Is, <laughs> is, is that it right there? Is that, that, that is, look, my grandfather? My grandfather's in the background with my sister. Um, you know, uh, he was just the absolute look best. Look at how uh, young we were, Brandon I know. Stokely. <laughs> I know, I know. I hey, know. you know, make me, I, the, make me the, cry. Oh, I know, man. Make that cry, night man. Uh, down at the Meyerhoff, we all got together back in in the spring, and, and ESPN put it on, and um, and Kevin Byrne was the MC because Sage Steele got hit with the golf ball, and so they they did all of this, and then Goose died soon thereafter. I. I it feels close to me because I sat in the theater. I bought a ticket. I was 25 rows back. I watched the whole presentation. Um, I got emotional. Other people got emotional. I saw people I hadn't seen in 10, 15 years. And there were a handful of players there, local guys. Uh, Kyle Richardson, I saw that. And just people I saw from the team. And then I think about like guys like you that weren't there that made, you know, like, 
it'll all be fresh because they showed outtakes and videos that I had never seen. And I wrote a book. I'm the, the only one to ever write a book about y'all. And I had never seen a lot of it and, and B-roll footage and funny things. And when Billick turned the lights off and said, you know, F the Tennessee Titans and like all, all of wow. the things that happened, um, they, they have never seen, be, never been seen before stuff that I saw in the theater. And I'm like, it blew my mind a little bit 20 years later, but you weren't in the theater. I, what are you expecting out of this thing? I mean, is this something where your kids will get together or is this something you'll watch in the den alone? Or is it more of, of is it going to be a family matter for you? No, I'll, I'll watch it with my family. Um, you got me excited because a lot of that stuff I don't remember. You know, oh, um, dude, and I didn't either. I, I don't remember a lot of those things like you're talking about, um, you know, turning the lights off against Tennessee, those types of things. Uh, so I'm excited for it. I really am. Uh, it was obviously just an unbelievable year. So much fun. You got so many great connections there. And just to relive it. Right. That's what it's all about. I mean, I do sports radio for three hours a day. You know, that, that's what I do now. I mean, that's it. And then I go to the golf course and play golf and, you know, hang out with the family uh, back then. You know, I mean, it's like uh, that that's like the prime of your life. And I love my life now. But like you look back and so much has changed. And that was a Super Bowl, man. I mean, how cool was that? And so to be able to relive that is going to be awesome. And, you know, we have lost some guys and uh, you don't see guys. Uh, you know, I'm over here in Denver. Guys are all over the country. And, you know, it was a shame because of COVID. We couldn't do the in-person uh, reunion uh, I don't know, you know, a year or two ago, uh, we got to do it on Zoom, but just being able to do it on Zoom and connect with with so many of those guys and see faces that you haven't seen for years. I mean, people get going and doing their thing and they got families and you just, you know, I mean, getting out to Baltimore from Denver, I mean, that's a hike. You mean, that dude, Flynn hike. and I love each other and we don't get together nearly and, you know, like we try and I've been trying to get him on the radio for two weeks and his kids are on Broadway, and blah, you know, like, I, you know, and, and even the local people, all of you, Brad Jackson chases his kids around playing sports yeah. and it's a different, it's a different life. It really is, you know? It, it is. And, um, you know, life moves quick, uh, as we can tell. So, uh, but it's always great to reconnect with you, and I can't wait to watch the the the, the film and, and and you know that's what it's all about is reliving those moments. And um, I'm looking forward to it now. You got me uh, really excited about it, and I, I can't wait to see it. Uh, it was such a special time in my life. I mean, it really was. Uh, second year, and then I mean, we're talking about it. I'm like, I still can't believe it happened. Um, and you know, you you'll always be called a Super Bowl champion. You always have that Super Bowl ring. And you'll, you know, you'll, you'll always be part of that organization. That's what I love about it. You know, you went from Art Modell, um, who I was fortunate enough to, to, you know, get to know and play under, then Steve Bashotti, um, who has been nothing but great to me. And that organization is just, they, they do things a certain way and that culture a certain way. And so to be a part of that and to see it continue throughout the years is just special. Brandon Stokely is out in Denver. Uh, I always wanted to catch a pass in the Super Bowl, and he always wanted to do sports radio. So he got to live his dream three hours a day uh, out in the Rocky Mountains, uh, uh, living large. And, dude, at some point I'm getting back to Red Rocks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out there for the right night. It's been a couple of years. Last time I was out there was Tom Petty, and it's been a, so it's been a number of years. Uh, and I'm, I'm off the beat now. I'm coming to Denver. So I'll come out there for uh, – for pleasure instead of business, I would say. Love good, it. Good, good, good to visit with you. Brandon Stokely, giving us a, a full look at the woeful Denver Broncos at this point and the uh, Ravens holding on. Luke's at Knowings Mills. All of it brought to you by our friends at Royal Farms. Real fresh, real fast. And uh, he'll be bringing the reports to you all week long. We'll be doing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour next week at Fadley's of Lex in the Market on the 9th. All of that brought to you by the Maryland Lottery in conjunction with our friends at Goodwill and Window Nation. I am Nestor. We are WNSD AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking Baltimore positive. <laughs>